On this episode, I am once again faced with that question, what playlist does Deep Blue Sea belong in? I, I went with sci-fi timelines, but, but you might disagree and think that it's horror, so, so this is for you guys. And if anyone thinks that it's more uh, like that they're action movies, here you go. And just to cover all of the bases, I mean, it, it is pretty silly, so. So let's get to it. The underwater adventure began back in 1999 with Deep Blue Sea from Rennie Harlan, five times nominee for the Golden Raspberry for Worst Director, but not for this, damn it. We begin with a shark attack out in the ocean, and unlike Jaws, which waited a while to show you the shark, um, here it is, three minutes in. Saffron Burrows is here, and I would reference her role from another movie, but I'll be honest, the only thing that comes to mind each time that I see her is, hey, that's the doctor from Deep Blue Sea, so that's who she's gonna be here. There's a newspaper here, and there's no date on it, but it shows this headline about Hakinen as the Formula One champ. And that's Mika Hakinen, who was a Formula One driver who won the championship in 98 and 99. So we could be in either of those years. Hold on to your butts is here along with Ronnie Cox, but oddly, Ronnie Cox has no dialogue. They seriously brought in Dick Jones to literally sit in a chair. He's not even credited in the film. They go to the Aquatica, an underwater research lab where Frank Castle works, and this film uses animatronic sharks mixed with CG ones, and it's kind of obvious which is which. This is real, and looks pretty good. And this is, um, not so good. They have three test sharks here, one bigger than the others, whose size actually changes during the film from 25 feet long to 45 feet by the end, just due to the differences in the model shark versus the CG one. Dick Ritchie is here as well, as is Eric Selvig, and Ladies Glove Cole James, of course, with his pet bird, and here's the most ridiculous fact though that you're gonna hear today, and that's that Frank Welker, otherwise known as the voice of Stripe from Gremlins, Dr. Claw, Iceman from Spider-Man's Amazing Friends, Megatron, and a million other cartoons that you loved, but now don't leave out the bird from Deep Blue Sea. So they've genetically tampered with the sharks in order to find a cure for Alzheimer's, and they do it, and the experiment's a success, but chaos quickly ensues, and can I point out that there's this whole plot thread that the sharks had like been planning for this to happen, but how on earth did they plan uh, for the storm and for the helicopter cable to break when it did? Their quote, plan doesn't work without these things happening. This Playboy issue is from 1998, and although that doesn't necessarily have to be current, I'd say tying that with a newspaper article, and that's most likely our year here. The Big Sam Jackson moment happens that's probably the most remembered moment of the film, and the cast and the sharks get picked off one by one until only the Doc, Cook, and Carter are left, as well as the big Mako shark. The Doc goes down, and here's an interesting bit, because the movie seems unsure on whether or not she's a hero or villain, but that's because behind the scenes, they thought that she was the main character and heroine of the film, even though the problems that they face are all her fault, and she doesn't really seem that remorseful about that fact. So, when they had the ending being her killing the big shark and saving the day and surviving, test audiences were pissed. So they went back and they did some careful re-editing and a single day of reshoots, and if you're curious what the original ending was, just give Susan that crossbow gun instead of Preacher, and there you go. Her and Carter even kiss. But that ending has never seen the light of day, and only still as if it exists, apparently. So they blow it up and they save the day, and we get the greatest lyrics in movie theme history. It's just so beautiful. 19 long years went by, but for some reason, someone said, hey, let's make Deep Blue Sea 2. And I mean, I'm sure that plenty of people have said that in the meantime, but this time, someone said yes, and may the old ones have mercy on his soul. 
Our intro gives us five sharks eating some poachers, and these guys are bull sharks that can be controlled by this little remote. There's a very scaled down version of the Sea Lab from the first film, and John is here and I hope he doesn't die in the end, and you know that they're going to have problems when all of their system files are in gibberish like this. There's an argument about the fence status, just like in the first one, and a group of scientists, including Misty here, head out at the behest of a pharmaceutical company, led by Michael Beach here, kind of a discount version of Sam Jackson's character, although quite a bit jerkier. Their thing here is that they're creating a new performance and intelligence enhancing drugs and they're uh, testing those on uh, bull sharks. Why? Why not mice or something that won't like eat you? Or, or even something that you don't have to have this complex undersea facility for. I mean, they repeat a lot of the same beats from the first one, and even some of the same shots as the original, to the point that this is practically a point-by-point -point remake. It doesn't appear to be linked in any other way, except as just a framework for its story. I mean, look at this shot of the shark eating the camera, directly from the original. And this character, who is the only one separate from the group, much like Preacher, who then gets caught up in a blast of water. One original wrinkle, though, is that the main shark has a bunch of babies, and I mean, they even attempt to do a version of the Sam Jackson surprise, but here you see it coming from a mile away. It's weird because I want to call it a ripoff, but with it being the sequel, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, if they had billed it as a remake, I guess I'd be more understanding, and the direct homages might not have felt so blatant, or I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe they would. Everyone navigates the hallways that apparently share the same lighting designer as Suspiria, and there's an unintentionally hilarious subplot in which I guess Durant is preparing for a war against robots. Well, you need to get back in because the war is coming. There is no war. Man against machine. Now you are so paranoid that machines, robots, computers are going to wipe us out. And, and for most of the movie, the five sharks aren't even really a plot point because the baby sharks become the main group of antagonists. And I guess as we get near the end, authorities send a drone to determine if Trent's emergency call was real and it gets eaten by a shark and they all get depressed like something bad just happened. But did they think that the people on the other end wouldn't have it linked up to a camera? I mean, is this a long distance drone that just operates on its own? I don't know. Durant dies, and they kill a big shark with some flare guns, and they blow up the facility, which I guess they then assume that this kills all of the sharks for some reason, and we just then cut to three weeks later. We find out that the other sharks are loose now and in the ocean, so I guess, like, regular sharks in the ocean? There's no date here, although lots of computer screens that seem like they should have dates, but don't, so we're setting it in real time 2018. I, I think it's pretty safe to call it a separate continuity than the first, but I guess it's entirely possible that it takes place in the same universe and it's just similar events happening to two different sets of people. I guess enough people were into that because two years later in 2020, we were saddled with Deep Blue Sea 3, which starts with Dr. Collins here, stationed on a little sinking island called Little Happy, where she's studying sharks adapting to climate change. We find out that it's a direct sequel to the last one as these guys have captured Bella, the main shark from part two, but her pups are still out there and they're fully grown now, so some time has passed. After they start attacking, they catch one and they say that it's three or four years old, so that's how much time it's been since the last film. They pull up a file on Bella on a computer, and there's an info screen about sightings of her, and she's listed as pregnant in 2017, which would have been the second film. So the second one takes place in 2017, which would make this one either 2020 or 21 then. They discuss the events of that film, and then they actually reference the first film linking the series together. Durant acquired Susan's research and expanded upon it, and so they are all in the same continuity. This security camera seems to indicate that it's March 18th, and the mercenary guys decide to blow up the whole area, including the island, to kill the sharks. They do a pretty fun callback to the Sam Jackson moment with a surprising death, 
and some silly fun shark stuff as everyone fights while they sink. They defeat the evil dudes, blow up two of the sharks, and Emma manages to crush the last remaining bull in a trash compactor. And they then sail off um, in, in, into the deep blue sea. So there you have it. It is three movies. Um, rather strange that they turned this into a series after such a long gap. Um, but yeah, they, I guess, eventually have some sort of a continuity, even if it doesn't totally matter too much. You can kind of watch any one of these movies. Uh, I would probably recommend only watching one of these movies. The first one is um, a classic. It's really fun. I love Deep Blue Sea. It is just a fun, silly, campy, goofy movie that's a wild ride from start to finish. And uh, yeah, I, I have no shame in loving that movie. The second one is a complete waste of time. It's pretty much just a weird, low-budget remake of the first one. Um, it would almost seem like a knockoff, but I guess it's not. I didn't mind the third one. The third one actually was pretty tolerable. Um, again, I'm not quite sure if I'd say enjoyable, but it is tolerable. Uh, if you get stuck watching it, you're not going to be mad about it. it it's fine. It, it's fine. Um, but overall, yeah, not the best series, although, you know, again, a great first movie. I just love it. Anyhow, let me know what you think of the Deep Blue Sea movies down below, uh, whether or not you hold them in as much regard as I do, or if you just straight up hate them, tell me that down below. Um, of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel, but you've already done that, right? I mean, you've done that, right? Also, please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash movie timelines and help support this channel. These guys are my patrons and they are freaking awesome. Uh, thank you guys very much for helping to support the channel. And you guys out there watching this video, you're helping to support it as well too. And I thank you just for watching the video and supporting it that way. I appreciate it. Share it out to your friends. Let them watch it. And I'll see you very, very shortly for another great video. Thanks guys and bye-bye.